first time I came here was just over four years ago, just under four years ago, sorry. Um, first time I came up to uh, Petticoat Distillery to meet Stuart Walker and the team. And it's one of those distilleries that I knew absolutely nothing about um, for the last sort of 20 odd years um, since I've been working with whiskey. And in terms of a sort of sensory experience, I think this, this distillery is, is super special. The sights, the sounds, the aromas. But more than that, the sort of hospitality here. So Bruce, the brewer, is going to take us around the distillery today. And um, Claire and Kelly, who are the um, brand home managers here as well. Um, and we've also got the team from the drinks cabinet who are taking care of coffee and uh, lunch for us all as well. But the way that you're welcomed here is incredible and you'll hopefully meet some of the guys in production today as well. Um, so ask as many questions as, as you'd want. Um, and Angus is here to take our picture. So big thanks to Angus and any any shots you want, just ask um, and we'll look after you. Um, but yeah, it, it's a pleasure to welcome you here today and the, the whiskey that we have in our glass, we thought, let's give you a whiskey while the palates are relatively clean. Um, so this is actually our better pair 18 year old Scottish oak. So a real kind of glimpse of the future of the distillery. Um, as we drove up the road there, you've noticed that the, the, the land that surrounds this distillery is, is very fertile. So lots of farming in this area. Um, and that's really important for the distillery. It's been here almost 200 years. So of course, having access to, to barley, very important for any whiskey distillery. We're at the foothills of the Cairngorm mountain range as well. So, you know, lots of snow melt, lots of access to fresh spring water. So perfect for making whiskey for the last 200 years. But almost more importantly than that, let's look at the next 200 years of whiskey production in Scotland. So of course, things like that are still very important. Getting local barley. All of the barley we use here comes from within 50 miles of the distillery. Um, it's a group of farmers, I think it's about 109 of them to be exact, who give us every grain of barley we need for a full year's production. Um, but you know, looking even further than that, the, the Fetter Care 18 year olds, a bit of a celebration of our larger Scottish Oak programme. And this was a, a, a kind of programme based on a flavour led approach to wood management, because of course, as you know, most of the casks that we used for maturing Scotch whisky come from America, they come from Europe, they come from <coughs> all over the world. But this was an opportunity to look less at relying on import, but in a flavour-led way. So of course to do that, you have to overcome a number of different challenges, such as getting access to a consistent source of Scottish oak. And for this release um, in particular, we work with three forests in the Highlands of Scotland, so Rossshire, Perthshire and Stirlingshire. Um, we also have to um, work on all the relationships necessary to turn that wood into casks that are suitable for maturing whisky. So we work with the local sawmill here, um, as well as a number of other sawmills around Scotland, um, who are actually able to, to cut the wood in a way which means we can air dry it in Scotland, we can kiln dry it in Scotland, before it's then turned into barrels. And for Fetter Care, we work very closely with the space like Cooperage um, that way. Is that right, Bruce? Yeah. That direction somewhere <laughs> over in Speyside. Um, and Speyside Cooperage are a, a, a huge, uh, a huge organisation who predominantly will repair barrels, you know. Um, but we have invested lots of money into um, training young coopers how to build barrels from scratch and how to work with these raw materials. And we're going to see all of that today, hopefully, um, kind of up to <coughs> the sawmill and talk to you a little bit about um, where the wood comes from and, 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 and how it looks before it's turned into barrels. But this whiskey starts its life in ex bourbon barrels. And I think what you're going to see today um, when, we, when we go through the distillery and try some other expressions as well is that Fetter Kim's New Mix Spirit sits really nicely in, a, in American oak and ex bourbon. It's very fresh, it's very fruity, and it's actually maybe slightly different to those older expressions of Fetter Kim that you might have tried in the past. So we relaunched Fetter Kim in its new clothes, if you will, in 2018. And previous to that, the distillery would be um, processing peated malt some of, the, some of the year and unpeated malt for the rest of the year. So some of the older expressions would be a combination of those two things. But I think, you know, to, to my earlier point, when you sort of open the doors, when you scratch the surface here, the, the production process is completely unique and incredible. The new mix spirit is so fruity and fresh, that lovely tropical fruit note. So using great ex bourbon barrels, perfect foundation for most better kind of expressions. And this 18 year old has been finished then in 100% Scottish oak casks. So these are actually first filled and, uh, or sorry, um, from unseasoned casks and then refilled. So some of them we filled once, we've emptied and we've filled again. So it's all about that kind of balance because with virgin Scottish oak, typically you're going to get lots of tannin, lots of spice, and kind of mature 
fruit characteristics, so a little bit more of a mature kind of uh, tropical fruit note coming through. Um, but yeah, let's have a little taste. Uh, <laughs> Sanjay, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. You're welcome.